Hey, what's going on, YouTube? This is your certified life and relationship coach, Coach Court, and in today's video, I want to talk to you about three tips on how to heal from any relationship. Thank you for sticking around. If this is your first time viewing me, do me a favor and subscribe to the channel by clicking that subscribe button and ringing that little bell so you're notified for the newest content. Before I get into the content, if you want my help personally, reach out to me on my website at www.fruitfulseeds with the Z at the end, com, and leave me an email no longer than two to three paragraphs long, no longer than 500 words as it makes it really difficult to respond to long emails. And also, if you want to buy me a coffee, I'll leave that link below. Buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com. Thank you. In today's video, I want to talk to you about three things that you can do to heal from a relationship. Now, I have a lot of different things that uh, I suggest to my clients that they do in order to heal uh, based on things that I've done to heal from my own breakups, but also for what I've learned from other clients. But the three things that I have today uh, are something that's really simple, something that you can apply right now, and I figured I would just share those with you. The first thing you want to do is to feel your emotions. Now, we have the tendencies to block or suppress those feelings when we are feeling uh, broken and when we are in that state we have a hard time being vulnerable and letting those feelings through especially if you're a dismissive avoidance so if you're a, you know if you're an anxious preoccupied uh, <laughs> we're going to be all over the place but you know any attachment style needs to go ahead and just let those those emotions out when you cry uh, your tears release oxytocin and endorphins. It's uh, something that will allow you to become more centered, which is why when people cry, they, they feel so much better. And when you're going through a breakup, uh, me and my cousin was actually talking about this. There will be hills and valleys. You know, the hills, you're, you feel like you can tackle the world. Uh, you feel like you've reached the acceptance part of the, the grieving process. And uh, you're just ready to move on from that person but then there'll be the valleys where you're laying in bed and you just all of a sudden cry you're screaming into your pillow uh, you are coming across uh, post and uh, music that you and your ex may have shared together maybe even Netflix shows so you want to go ahead and pause uh, take time to uh, feel those emotions and let them through you have to feel it to heal it uh, so I was talking to my mom about a month ago and she said something that really stuck with me and I was talking to her about my relationship stuff, you know, how my business is going and the, and the things that I'm doing and she kind of reflected on some of the stuff that I was going through personally uh, and she came up with a quote, she said, you got to go through to get through and I was like, mom, where did you get that quote from? Did you read that in a book or... She said, no, it's just something that I personally figured it out. Like, wow, that aligns perfectly with feel it to heal it. So take the time to feel those emotions. If you got to uh, take a time out at work to go in the bathroom or go out to the car and cry and let those emotions out, please do it. You're going to feel better after. The next thing you want to do is you want to exercise. That's another way to let out those endorphins uh, and to let out those negative stuck block energy that gets trapped inside you because that's all... Uh, grief is it's that stuck energy you get stuck in that grieving process where you're in denial you're in uh, you know you're, you're bargaining or you're you're potentially just not really handling it well so in order to get past those phases you have to uh, get yourself in a healthy routine where you're back exercising you're back letting out sweating out those negative emotion it's just stuck energy there are times when I'm doing my coaching sessions where I would just decide to walk and Walking definitely helps me out because it allows my brain to keep moving forward. You know, when I used to mentor kids and I used to uh, try to have conversations with them, they didn't want to talk about certain topics. But if I got them moving, if I got them exercising and moving forward, uh, some of the conversation just flowed so much more uh, freely. There's a book called Flow by uh, Mihai Chikchiniai. And he talked about flow and that. When you're in flow... Um, you have a high level of awareness. You're uh, you're in the zone essentially. And you know my mentor or you know somebody I really looked up to was Kobe Bryant. And when he was in flow, 
when he was on the court, uh, those games where he was just shooting lights out and he couldn't be uh, couldn't be stopped. He was definitely in the zone. Uh, he was in flow when he got into those those levels of uh, heightened senses and heightened awareness. They're literally uh, getting. They're like tapping into some type of energy or higher divine uh, level of consciousness. So one thing that I notice when I'm having a tough time, uh, you know, reciting certain books that I've read, I would just get out and I would walk and when I'm when I'm coaching and it'll just be coming from out of nowhere. Like I'll really be tapping into these sources and, and, and just having a much better session. One way that you can really let out those negative emotions and those those the trapped energy that gets stuck inside you is, you know, to do yoga. I know people are going to think that yoga is for a certain type of people, but honestly, yoga, uh, when you're stretching and you're you're practicing mindfulness and you're focusing on your breaths and you have to um, really sit with that pain temporarily, you know, it's a really good uh, expression in order to allow that stuck negative energy to just flow through you and get the kinks out also. My last tip would be to reconnect with friends and family. When we get into relationships, we often lose ourselves. We often, uh, if you're anxious, preoccupied, we literally put our friends and our family on the back burner. We kind of engulf and you know, take up the other person's hobbies and immerse our lives into theirs. So it's important for you to get back to doing the stuff that you were doing before you were in a relationship. Get back to reconnecting with your friends and your family. Connect with the people who were really, you know, bummed out about you not giving them as much quality time as they'd like. Call up your friends. Call up your families. They can be really good resources in order to help you get through this breakup and just kind of vent and have somebody to help you be that sounding board that you need in order to get through this because you have to talk about this. You can't sit and stew on the breakup. So if you found this video of any value, please like, comment, and share. Uh, follow me on my other social media accounts. Twitter is Coach Court 2, Instagram is I am Coach Court, and Facebook is I am Coach Court. Thank you guys, and I will talk to you soon.